Welcome back and thanks for joining me again. If you've watched my other videos you'll know that I've recently got rid of my drill press because the spindle was bent and there was no way I was going to repair it myself. So using FreeCycle somebody else has taken it and hopefully they can repair it. So in the near future I'm going to get myself a brand new one and I'll do an unboxing and we can test it out. I've also sent off my planer to be repaired. It's been making some pretty scary noises and with those blades spinning around quite as fast as they do, I really didn't want it to go bang halfway through planing something. So today I thought we'd go back to basics. In my day job, I teach primary age children woodwork and one of my most popular projects is making wooden bow ties. It's a really good introduction to woodwork. It introduces kids to using a saw, rasps, sandpaper, and so on, and it's very rewarding, and you have a lovely little product at the end. So we start off using a coping saw. We're going to use a coping saw because coping saws are really good at cutting around corners and funny shapes. And the reason they can do this is because they have such a thin blade that allows us to turn as we saw. We've got this nice big gap so that we can go around the wood. We're going to use some rasps. The rasps are going to shape the wood once we've cut out a basic shape. This is a Shinto Japanese saw rasp and these are terrific. Get hold of one if you can. They're not massively expensive. They're called saw rasps because they've got saw-like teeth on either side. On this side they're very big teeth and it removes loads of wood and the other side can be used for smoothing it and it's surprising how smooth it can go. We've also got some traditional ones. This is one I've had these for years. This has got a curved edge which will be handy for shaping as well. Uh, just a normal flat one but smaller. And this round one might be good for doing some little sort of nice edges to the bow tie. You're going to need some elastic. This is just from a local store. This elastic is going to go around so it's going to hold the bow tie in place. We're going to need some sandpaper and this is a great way to introduce people to how one uses sandpaper. Starting off with the coarsest sandpaper with the lowest number and then working our way up until we end up with something very smooth, in this case 400. Maybe you don't need to go all the, all the way up to 400 but you could do. For the middle part of the bow tie, sort of where the knot is, we're going to use some material. When I do this in school I just use some cloth that we've got lying around, we've got big sort of baskets full of bits of cloth and the children can choose which one they want. You could do that and we normally attach it either with um, a hot glue gun just to keep it in place or you can attach the elastic and the material at the same time with a small screw. But uh, I found this little piece of felt and it's got uh, a sticky back to it. So I thought I'd try this this time. So you can get this again online easily enough and it might be an easier way of doing uh, the middle part. Finally we've got a piece of scrap pine. Uh, this, this piece is around uh, eight centimeters by two centimeters. It doesn't have to be exactly the same size as this, just whatever you can find. Uh, it doesn't have to be pine. If you've got some other wood, it might be nice. I've created a template for you. Uh, you can download this on my website. I'll uh, put a link in the show notes and we will cut this out and then draw around it on the wood and then cut it out. We'll do that in a minute. If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe. Oakley would love it.
So I've got my template and the first thing I'm going to do is cut out the bow tie shape. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stick it to my piece of wood and then draw around it. Looking at this piece of wood, I've got a knot here. So I'm going to try to avoid that and find some space where I can put it and avoid the knot. Also, make life easy for yourself if you can. Uh, I often find children like to put things dead center, but that then means you've got a lot more sawing to do to get to the middle. So if you can put it near the edge, that can also save you a bit of sawing. So I'm going to put it about there, and then I'm going to draw around it. What we use at school is a little dab of Pritt stick just to hold it in place while you draw around it. Uh, I actually haven't got any of that at home at the moment, so I'm just going to use some photo mount instead. I'll try to. There we go. Uh, I'm going to peel it off almost immediately. And we're then just going to draw around it. You could, of course, just keep it on and saw around the actual template, if you preferred. Uh, I prefer to draw a line and follow the line, but it doesn't matter. And there we have our bow tie. Now that we've marked our tie, we're going to cut it out. I'm just going to mark a pencil line using my tri-square. So on here I've marked a nice right angled line. What children tend to do when they first start doing this is they don't get the saw at right angles to the wood they tend to cut at an angle, either that way or that way, because they're focusing on where the lines are and they forget that there is a thickness to the wood and that they need to keep it nice and perpendicular. So this can be helpful by marking a line on the edge to help you keep your saw nice and straight. So now we just have to cut it. I find getting started with my thumb next to the blade is the easiest. Just to rest it, you're not actually cutting your thumb, hopefully. One of the nice things about these blades uh, is that we can turn them sideways to cut sideways. Now it's not going to be a very clean cut, but that doesn't matter because we're going to be shaping it with our rasps anyway. There we go. And we have our very basic shape, which we can now start to carve. So I'm going to start off with my Japanese rasp. 
just to start smoothing the edges a little bit. Try to always go with the grain if you can, otherwise you get splintering at the edges. Uh, but it's not always possible, it's quite difficult on this sort of shape. So just try to be fairly gentle with it. I'm using the smaller teeth. I'm going to use the curved part of this one. So what we're trying to do is just round off all the edges, make it as smooth as possible. So looking from above, uh, I'm trying to give this a curve that way and that way. Okay, that's coming along nicely. I'll stop the video, do the other side, and come back to you when we're ready to sand. Okay, so I've finished both sides now. And we could stop there. Uh, we've got quite a nice shape. We've got it curved across the sides there, like that, and then along the top it's curved that way as well. So it's looking quite nice, and we could just sand it. Uh, but I thought what we could do now is perhaps give it some sort of wrinkles at either end of the tie using this, our round rasp. So I'm going to put it back in the vise and work downwards Okay, finished that. Um, I've put in these sort of quite rough looking little indents um, to make it sort of a bit more textured. And now I think we're ready to do some sanding. We're going to start with some quite rough P60. And I'm going to cut it down to a smaller size. Here we're getting rid of the roughest parts. And P60 will still leave some scratch marks but that's why we use the other bits of sandpaper because we'll then get rid of those. Now to get into the grooves that we cut we could wrap the sandpaper around the rasp I think that's too thick. Try something thinner, like wrapping around a screwdriver. And I'll continue going round and then come back to you in a minute. So now that I've done that, I'm going to do some on the top. So what you're trying to do at this stage is just get rid of any sort of of the bigger indents from when you're using the rasp. Good. Okay, so we started at 60, we're now going to move to 80 and do it all again. So I've done some uh, 120, this is 180. If it gets clogged, just 
give it a tap, knock out the dust that's getting in between the bits of grit, and then you can carry on. Okay, 240. And I'm going to finish with some 320. Uh, I do have some 400 as well, but I don't think it needs it. It's starting to feel very smooth. Woodworkers notoriously hate sanding. And it is quite laborious, but once you get up to these very fine grits and the wood begins to feel almost like a smooth pebble, it is very satisfying. And there we have it, lovely and smooth. Feels really nice. And you could go on and continue making it even smoother if you want to. Get rid of any little marks. And what we have to do next is put on the little knot part in the middle. But before we do that, we're going to measure the elastic. We found over the years that the best way of measuring it is to take the elastic, unstretched, so don't pull it tight, but keep it just as it is, and measure around your neck. And then cut at that point. By the time you've got a shirt collar and we've overlapped it a little bit to fit onto the tie, it works out about the right amount of stretch. Now let's get the middle part put onto the bow tie. So what we're going to do now is cut the felt in order to stick it to the middle of the bow tie. I'm just going to measure approximately the middle. There's no definite size to this, just about how big you want the knot to be. I'm going to measure there. Draw a straight line. And cut it out. Now we peel off the sticky back. Shall we get it straight? There we go. Next we need to make a hole. And this is going to be where the screw holds in the elastic. Uh, you'd want to use a braddle. Um, I don't actually have one. Uh, so what I've done is I've, uh, I've sharpened an old screwdriver to make it into an awl. I really should get one one day. There we go. Next we need to make a little hole at each end of the elastic. I've tried all sorts of different ways of doing it. I've tried uh, skewering it with the bradle. Um, I think what happens is when you do that, it sort of closes up again. So another way of doing it is to fold it and just take a small cut to it. You need quite a sharp scissors for this to work. And that should make a little hole that we can then put the screw through. We'll do one at the other end. So now we're going to put the screw through all of the different pieces. And make sure you don't get the elastic twisted. And the screw through that. And that. Okay. 
There we go. And now we just have to screw it into our bow tie. And there we have it. Finally, you might want to put a finish on it. You could just leave it as plain wood, or you could use a varnish. I'm going to use some of my tongue oil and beeswax finish that I make myself. Uh, the label's got a bit messy, but there we go. And just wipe it off. And there we have it. Let's try on, shall we? I think it needs a proper shirt. But there we go. Quite pleased with that. If you like this video, <laughs> all right, he's had enough.